What is the integral of square root of x squared minus 1 over x to the fourth dx? Well, we can tell from the square root that this is likely to be a trig integral, and we're going to have to make a substitution of sorts. And um, we can see from the numerator that this is in the general form of square root of bx squared minus a squared, where b and a are constants. So looking here, b is likely, you know, 1 since the coefficient of x squared is 1, and a squared is also 1 since the square root of 1 is still 1. So we can rearrange this as x equals a over b secant theta. That is the form that you have to memorize. And um, given this form, we can determine that the tan squared of theta equals secant squared of theta minus 1. So now let's solve for a, which we again said was 1, b is also 1, and now we can determine what x is. So it's just 1 over 1 secant theta, so therefore x equals secant theta. So now we are ready to uh, start this integral. So uh, let's substitute secant theta for x now. So this integral will become integral of square root of secant squared theta minus 1. We don't need to do anything to the minus 1. It's just by itself. And that's over, again, secant representing x to the fourth power theta. And now, instead of dx, we're going to need this in terms of d theta so that we will be allowed to integrate properly. So let's take the derivative here, dx equals well, we know that the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tan theta with respect to theta, d theta. And um, now we can isolate d theta to be equal to that. So secant times secant theta tan theta d theta. Since, again, dx is equal to that term. Now we can do a little bit of simplification and substitution. Let's do that right now. This is equal to the integral of, we can already tell from this term here that secant squared theta minus one is tan squared theta. So let's substitute that in, tan squared theta. And now we're setting this over uh, secant four theta times secant theta. We can reduce the term here and that'll become over secant cubed theta times tan theta d theta. We can go uh, one step further, set that equal to the integral of, we know that the square root of tan squared is just tan, so it would just be tan squared theta over secant cubed theta d theta. And now to further simplify this term, all we have to do is split apart tan theta since there's no other real way to actually approach this. So this will become the integral of sine squared theta over cosine squared theta times 1 over secant cubed theta, which is equivalent to cosine cubed theta d theta. Now we can see here two terms cancel out, and this will become equal to the integral of sine squared theta cosine theta d theta. Now, uh, it seems that we're going to have to do a little bit of u sub. And since the higher term is sine in this case, and that it's even to an even power, we can set u equal to sine theta, where du equals cosine theta, d theta. And d theta would equal du over cosine theta. So let's sub that in now. This will equal the integral of u squared, since u equals sine theta times cosine theta with respect to du over cosine theta, as we've determined from the previous equation here. The cosine thetas cancel out, and that leaves us with the integral of u squared du. And we know that the integral of u squared with respect to u is just u cubed over 3 plus c, since this is an indefinite integral. Now, let's go back in terms of theta. This will become equal to, since u is sine theta, this will just be one third. I'm moving the fraction to the left, sine cubed theta plus c. 
However, we're not at the answer yet. We initially had the integral in terms of x, so we're going to have to go from theta to x. So essentially this is where the triangle comes in. We look back up here where we were solving some of the variables, and we can see that x equals secant theta. So let's draw a triangle real quick. That was my attempt at a right angle triangle, and where this is theta. And since x equals secant theta, we know that to solve for cosine, you're going to do adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is just the opposite of that. For secant, it's just hypotenuse over adjacent. So all we have to do now is we know that x equals secant theta. So hypotenuse has to be x, since that's the numerator. And that's over adjacent, which can only be 1, since x over 1 would equal x. So this leaves us with the last term over here, where it's the square root of c squared minus uh, a squared. In this case, setting a equal to 1, c equal to x. So it'll be square root of x squared minus 1 squared, which is just 1. So now this will allow us to do our final substitution. This will be 1 third. We know that sine theta in this case is the square root of x squared minus 1. So let me put a parentheses square root of x squared minus 1 over the hypotenuse of x. Raise that to the third power, add a c there, and there is your answer. So that is the answer to the integral of square root of x squared minus 1 over x to the fourth dx. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and good luck.